Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me for today. I'm a little late. I'm sorry about that. We got hello to REG, who's joining us here tonight. And we got the one and only Uncle Stefano, Ooh. aka the Watch Wizard, joining us. Yeah. Of course, before we begin, we got to start off with a quick wristwatch check. I'm wearing, obviously, the Daily Beater. Ari's got on the Date Just. And Stefano's got on nothing. Oh, what do we got here? We got a little. What's in the Date Just? Nice. Ooh. What, what color dial is that? Is that a black. sexy? It's a black dial. Sixteen oh three, or what are we talking? Uh, the nephew, the savant. <laughs> I forgive you for being late on that one. There you oh, go. It is a sixteen oh three, right? Yes, it is. Nice. 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 Uh, ladies, they just factory diamond dial. Nice. What are the prices? Wow. Prices on those? I'll give them both for. I'll give them away. Eight thousand Canadian for both. Fully refinished, ready. Done. What's the price back. for each, though, individually? What did they oh, do? Now, now, now you want to break it down. Now you want to break it down. Come on, man. Your uncle's each. giving you a deal. He's giving four you a deal. Each. Okay, yeah. for each. There for you go. Each. There you go. Canadian or U.S.? Canadian. Four thousand Canadian. They're that's cheap. cheap. Yeah. That's, oh hell yeah. That is Diamond dot alone is like fifteen hundred. We got Muhammad Ali starting us off in the chat with a 10-pound super chat. Thank you very much. Saying good luck with the show tonight. I will catch the replay when I get up in the morning. I need my beauty sleep to stay sexy as my Mr. GMT instructor. <laughs> very nice, man. I appreciate the super chat. That's very kind of you. You know, I, I needed to stay sexy myself, so I wanted to get a haircut. You know, I had to get it all done. I'm, done I need done. to do that. I need yeah, to do that. Yeah, I mean, I was really do. So the problem was, already like everything got shut down. Uh, with COVID basically around the new year, right? So it only started opening up recently, at least here in Quebec. So yeah, it had been a while. It, yeah. We got Mike David in the chat saying, home early, let's get it on. We got SLC watch collector with a $20 super chat saying he upvoted and excited to talk watches. Definitely. I am excited to talk watches as well. Uh, we got Basil's Bezels in the chat saying, make me a Marco is iconic. Is iconic of a quote as this is Sparta. You know what? It's a hilarious. I love that. It's hilarious. Uh, Mike David asking, I feel the PRX is an in joke that I don't get. Yeah. yeah. So, speaking of hype watches, right? That's tonight's topic. I'm going to my AD, Stefano, to try on a PRX. I, I, will, I will honestly, in all honesty, I will most likely buy it. I was talking about this with Ari backstage. The PRX is just like a fun beater watch. Um, I think it's kind of become a meme in the sense that, you know, it's, it's, I mean, it's not a cheap watch, but it's a cheaper watch, if you will. Uh, and it's just a cool design. I think it's yeah. good value for money, but we just kind of turned it into a joke. It kind of yeah. Game, if you will. Oh, for sure. I mean, it's going to turn into my uh, you know what you know when I get mine. It's going to turn into my really my vacation. You know, a nice watch for vacation. You know, like right. like JJ. Even though I don't want to admit he's right, he's not wrong by calling it your destination wedding watch in a way because really you would hmm. wear it on vacation somewhere where you don't want to bring your you know, your $20,000, uh, you know, Batman or something, you know, it's still nice enough that you can wear and you, you don't mind if you dink it up here and there. You yeah. That's mind. the way yes. I see it too. You get robbed either. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yeah. That too. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, it's still like robust enough, you know, hundred meter water resistant. You don't have to, you know, you don't baby, have to, really you don't have to worry. baby it. You don't yeah, have to you baby don't have it. To worry yeah. about it. And I don't personally like wearing G-Shocks to be honest with you. I don't think G-Shock is God tier. I'm sorry. It's a blue everybody's mind. No, hey. It's just not <laughs> like, I'm just not a fan. You don't have to toe the party line anymore, man. That's it. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. like, it's just not, not, not for me. So that's, that's mm. the, that's kind of the thing. Um, I'd rather have a mechanical watch. PRX perfectly does it. Yeah. Danger. Yeah. Will Robinson in the chat saying y'all are a bad influence. Now my wife wants a blue PRX. So they are coming out with the 35 mil, right? The ladies models. That's really cool. I saw yeah. that. Yeah. Which I and hope, I wish they would have done in like a little, a touch bigger, like 36, 37. So it would be like more unisex option, but uh, whatever. Yeah. And they're, they're coming with the green dial. They are. Are they really? That's, that's what I, that's what I, yeah, that's what I, that's what, what I thought it yeah. Okay, I'll pull it up. Let's see. Full on John says I just bought a shitter, the Orient Kamasu Red Dial. I mean, they're not that bad. Not, not a, good a shitter. Yeah, Orient yeah. is a perfectly serviceable watch. Let me look oh, here. Let's pull it up. I thought they announced it, and I believe someone in the chat said as well. I apologize. I forget who said it too. Sure, sure. I see the comment. I'll pull it up. Yeah, I, I like. I mean, this is a nice, cool diver. Same kind of idea, right? It's like a beater. Beat around, knock around kind of watch. So the new green PRX. 
Let's see. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they just announced it, but didn't. Oh, I yeah. thought I saw a picture. I remember oh, seeing a picture. Yeah. There it is. Where did I just see it? Oh. There was a picture. Right there. Oh. Yeah, I just see a picture right here, but that's not the. That's actually the gentleman. That's not the power Maddie Katie. Weird, huh? I guess it. I guess it will. Uh, I guess I'm sure it will come up. We got yeah. the watch wizard Uncle Stephen with the twenty dollars super chat saying for the VC fund. Lol. Yeah, I mean, I I got to get on that, guys. This is the problem, right? I want to get a, a PRX, but I also want to get a Vashron. I'm waiting for a sub at retail. What am I gonna do? I, I can't even. I can't. This is too many watches. You know what I mean? It's too many watches. I need to. What are you gonna spend on the PRX? Is about the leather strap on your VC or your. <laughs> right, pretty much. Or, or the clasp, AP or just the just the clasp. clasp. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's it. Yeah, pretty much. The it's the strap and the clasp. Yeah, pretty much. Mike David saying, "I like a red dial." I do too. I think it's nice. Yeah. We got wings and watches saying he upvoted. Great to see everyone. Thanks for joining. Uh, Mike David. Saying they did a red dial. I'm just wondering what, and, and again, I'm not disrespecting anyone's taste who likes a red dial, but what, you know, I'm just thinking what I would match that with in terms of clothes and stuff. Yeah, it's a little or tougher, right? Like Moser did that gray. Yeah, yeah. maybe. It's, it's blue, gray. It, you, got, you, you got to wear a fun outfit, I guess, for you to pull yeah. that off. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We got BTB boss man in the chat. We got underdog saying my Hamilton khaki field watch is a great travel. Yeah, that makes sense as well. Absolutely. Makes perfect sense. <laughs> I love wearing it. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So I wanted to talk about hype watches. Hype watches. Oh my hmm. God. What do we think? What do we think? That three to one, I made 27 phone calls and secured three today. Are you kidding? 27 phone calls, US and Canada. I secured three. What's the price? Uh, fourteen one six eight. That's US. US? That's US. US. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's pretty good. That's actually yeah. That's you don't know than what, I bar what bargains deals I had to make today. I just I swear to God, four and a half hours of just trying three. That's really good. Like a you got buyers. I had to go through twenty eight phone calls. Yeah, all right. So, so yeah, it's it, they're not a, they're a bit rare, but you were able to get them. But you had to yeah. be really motivated. You had to work hard yeah. at it in order to grab them. But right, Steph, yeah. you don't. I go. I hate speedies. They're not for me. Don't worry about it. Yes, I'll I'll flip you this for that. I'll you know, a couple so, yeah. of stones, a couple of diamonds. You had to really, you had to really wheel really and deal. I really had to get yeah. nitty gritty. Yeah. Look at this. We got Juan O saying, "Wizard, are any available?" There might be one on the a fourth one, but I have to wait till they get back to me before Friday. If there's one available, reach out to me and I'll secure it for you. Right. People yeah. are going nuts for this watch, Marco. Why? More Wait, than the Speedy, uh, more than the Silver Snoopy, man. Because the three to one is a better watch than the Snoopy, though. It's much better. The movement is better. Yeah, but you're not going to get 35 grand for that. Like, you will get 30, 35 for the silver. Yeah, but the Snoopy's so lame. Like, they made, like, three Snoopies it's already. It's not for me. Don't get yeah. me wrong. But... No, no. Like, we're just it's talking not, about It's not a bad yeah. watch. Don't get me wrong. I like the Snoopy. But I prefer the 3 to one It's more historically accurate. It's a more muted watch as well. Like, I don't know. I just prefer it much more. It's such a big deal, man. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. For a couple oh. pennies more, you have your VC. Why would you buy a freaking Speedmaster? Really? Yeah. Juan O says he has a Snoopy on the way. He would rather have it. And SLC says, could we say our favorite hype watches? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I guess I could start with mine. Probably my favorite hype watch. Although my mind is kind of, I've done a 360 on this watch. I used to not really like the Royal Oak. But, you know, I got to oh. be honest. The, the, Oak, the Oak is a damn good hype watch. It is a damn good hype watch. Wow. I mean, you think about it, right? Historically. It's the first kind of integrated bracelet, steel, blue dial, Genta design. It, it flipped the watch mark on his head. I think people finally realized and appreciated like, oh, steel is a good metal or better metal for everyday purposes. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I have to be honest. I think, I think I'm on the Royal Oak hype train. I am on the Royal Oak hype train. We've got full on Johnson, the VC overseas, oh, yeah. which we'll get That's back nice to. too, yeah. And we got Andres Borghetti with a twenty dollar yes. super chat. Thank you very much. Saying good evening, gents. Always happy to see this great panel. Thanks for joining us, Andres. Yeah. So, I mean, VC Overseas Blue, I think, is a current phenomenon, which I'm not totally on board with. I mean, I see them going for like seventy thousand 
77,000 Canadian. It doesn't make sense. I mean, those watches six months ago were 35 grand. Yeah, they were 35. They're going to come down pretty fast. Yeah. They'll, they'll, they'll dip. Yeah. But I, I see mean, as you mature, you go to Royal Oak now. Now I'm proud of you even yeah. more so, okay. nephew. So here's the thing, right? I still prefer I still prefer Vacheron over everything, right? So if I had the choice, actually, I'd probably over take Royal it. Oak. You take this, really? No, I take the Royal Oak. I take oh, the Royal Oak. Okay, but I think these have gone kind of way too hot. Like yeah. it's ridiculous how much yes. these have uh, yes. have appreciated. Uh, and they, I'm I'm with you. Screwed the ads, you know that, right? All the Vacheron Constantine ads are going through the roof, pissed off. Only boutique can get a blue dial, right? Yeah, I know that's kind of that's kind of shitty to be honest. With yeah, you. it screws their it screws their their dealers. Yeah, um, you need three million to open up a VC account if you're approved. But yeah, this this overseas is nice, but it's not. I'm sorry, it's not a seventy five thousand Canadian watch. No, I would probably get like a black dial fifteen, fifteen five hundred. Yes, How black dial those? is the way to go. I think those those are pretty much the same price, right? Royal Oak, your money say much. Twenty six thousand list, man. I know that's crazy, right? It's crazy. that's ridiculous. That's crazy. ridiculous. But yeah, I got to be honest. AP Royal Oak. I think honestly, the captain hit the nail on the head. If you get the Royal Oak, fifteen three hundred. I think that's the sweet spot <laughs> to be honest with you, because it's thirty nine millimeter, which is the original kind of Royal Oak size, like the the, the original jumbo. It's the first AP with an in-house movement also. The only thing I can critique is that goddamn date wheel. <laughs> like, why? Why is it a white date wheel? I just yeah, don't understand. It's an odd choice. It's an odd choice. They it could doesn't have make sense. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Sure. But the 500, I personally like the best, the 450, which is the ladies model. Seth, you love this one, right? The 450? <laughs> yeah, I'll wear it on my pinky. It is, it's honestly, my pinky ring. It wears so well. The 37 mil wears so – I know it's technically the ladies' model, but I'm becoming more and more into, like, smaller watches. And the Royal Oak already wears very big. I think this is awesome. Awesome piece. All right, let's go back to the chat. SLC Watch Collector says, the Paddock 5167. You know what? You aren't wrong. I mean, you own this. You do own this watch, right? The 5167 is the Aquanaut. Um, uh, this, yeah, this is a pretty prototypical hype watch for sure. Yeah, yeah, but, I, but he has it, doesn't he? Yeah, he has it, but he got it at retail. To be fair, oh, okay. So if you get it at retail, I mean, I think it's no brainer. I don't think you you'll ever go. But I don't think you would like that. It's not my favorite, to be honest yes. with you. Yes, it isn't my favorite. But I think out of, not, not for you, Nautilus or Aquanaut. You're more. I like the twelve. VC guy or KV guy. Yeah, I do like the 12, though, the 5712. I'm a sucker for the moon face. Oh, okay. I am a sucker for the moon face, which I know SLC, he's on the wait list for, I think, in Rose Gold. But, yeah, the 5712 speaks to me more out of all the Nautilus. Okay. And I like the 5980R. The, oh. But I don't I, like it on bracelet. So I like the this one uh, here. It's really nice. On, on strap, it's gorgeous. I was going to say I kind of like the other one on uh, – on bracelet? Yeah, on bracelet, yeah. Yeah, yeah I kind of really nice. like it. I kind of like it. But again, not my favorite, but it is kind of nice. Right. Well, if you ever try it on your hand, you won't be as impressed as you are with the pictures, Ari. Yeah, <laughs> but really, it's not comfortable. You watch it that it's a reverse. Right. You know? it's, 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 a, it's actually a huge letdown, right? You hear all about this watch, and you finally try it on. It's like, really? This is it? Like 100 plus thousand for this? This is probably my favorite one. I love this one. Hmm. That is beautiful. I mean, I love this on one. leather. I think it's more eloquent. Yeah, it's so elegant. It's super yeah. elegant. Super elegant. Okay. Um, yeah, Juan, one hundred percent. All VC overseas are now oh, yeah. crazy. Craziness. Ooh, hey, Brennan says fifteen five hundred was sold for ninety grand the other day. A twenty six thousand dollar watch. No, come on. Uh, yes, ninety thousand dollars. <laughs> What the hell's wrong with people? I mean, Seriously. it's going to go to what, 150,000? Which is crazy. I mean, this is crazy. Try yeah, to get one. Over Try to go yeah. on the, in the yeah. AB and get pick one up. Yeah, they'll laugh at you. Oh, they'll do worse than what they did to Swiss. APs right. become very snooty, and that's the list price. But we're not, we're asking, they ask higher than list price at yeah. the boutiques, man. 
Crazy. I mean, and so does Rolex, to be fair. You want a GMT, you got to buy a couple other watches. So you're technically always paying more than this anyways. But Same they don't the make you buy a Code 1159. They just say, yeah, it was 26. Now it's 45,000. Because they know you'll go out and sell it for 70, right out. Right. But the thing is, so here's my thing, right? I mean, we, we say AP is playing like those games, right? Where they have to buy the code or what have you. So you technically have to pay over list. But we still do it for Rolex. We do it for Patek. Yes. You have sure. to buy other watches before you're able to get that too. Yeah. Now, if you play your cards right, you can end up being, you know, a winner. Like you end up getting a lot of good watches and you end up, you know, getting getting your money's worth. But not always the case. It's not always the but case. But you'll never get your money if you have to buy 1159 to get a 15500. You'll never get your money back for the 1159. No. Oh, no, no. <laughs> You're going to lose big time. Oh, well, look who we got. We got Peruka the Troll saying the movement fin is bad finishing oh, on the goodness. Royal Oak. There's yeah, no but you kissed the ass to get that watch. I know you. Yes. <laughs> so to be fair, he's not wrong. Like for that expensive of a watch, the fact it has zero beveling is not good. Uh, but it is a sports watch. So eh. For the Royal Oak? Yeah. It's only 26 grand, man. What's the big deal? 26,000 is a lot of money. What do you mean? <laughs> Would you rather pay 40,000 for a Daytona? No, I, wouldn't deal. Really, I saw the black one today sell for 42000 to a dealer, and he flipped it for forty six. Crazy. Ridiculous. Yeah. It is. Uh, Mike says, 15500 is my choice. Movement fills. So here's my question, right? The 500 has the date at 3 o'clock, but it uses yeah. the code 1159 movement, right? Yeah. And then on the shitty codes, they have the 430 day window. That makes no sense to me. They shift the gear. That's all it is. I know, but it's so stupid. Why would they do a 430 day window? It looks awful. Just to stand out, not to stand, not to be neck and neck with the Royal Oak. To make it look a little different. Underdog says the 15500 black dial has more pop than the blue dial. Yes. You know which one I like too? I like the gray dial. I know that's super underrated. Not the silver, the gray, right? So the hold gray. on, let me pull it up. No, it's very elegant, the gray. I, I know exactly. I can picture it. Absolutely. I don't know why people don't like it. It's not, it's very, it's more monochromatic. I'll be honest with you because it's, you got kind of gray brush steel. plus. A gray uh, I dye. think it's, I think it's really elegant. I think it's I beautiful. I love it. I absolutely love it. I think this color combo is the best. Why is it so pixelated? Give me a good picture. The dial pops. It's so nice. It's super nice. Oh, it's yeah, just it's awesome. Cool. It's really nice. And they I match agree. the date wheel on this. Yeah, the no... date wheel matches perfectly. And it's, yeah. The only complaint is the size. 41 is way too big for a Royal Oak. Way too big. Actually, this would be a great watch for, for Your seven. Your cousin yeah. wears it. Who's this? My son. Oh, your son. <laughs> I get to see the fucking thing. <laughs> nice. When he nice. came over, oh, dad, you know what I forgot? Yeah, I know what you forgot, the AP. Yeah, I put it in the safe, dad, you little... Mm. Yeah, this one, I mean, it's just, it's incredible. I think this is as good as it gets, honestly. Beautiful. If you can't get the black dial, I think this is your next best option, to be honest with you. I, I still prefer the black, to be honest, though. But this so one is honest. super underrated. I was never a hype. I, I never got hyped up over the blue dial. This, I prefer the black over all of them. But you know what I don't get, right? People pay like six, ten, twenty thousand 20,000 more just for a dial. Like a, yeah. a specific dial yeah. color. It's the yeah. dumbest thing I've ever heard of. Yeah, it doesn't life. cost a, it doesn't cost the watchmaker any more money to create it that. It costs the dial. same amount. Yeah. It's the same yeah. amount. It's the Ridiculous. same techniques. They're doing the same thing. But you can't buy it after market. Right. Yeah. Unless somebody sits there and makes it for you and it won't match. Yes, exactly. Insane. Oh, here we go. Ninety six thousand dollars, boys. Nobody wants that. Oh, sorry, ninety one thousand six hundred. It sounds like a deal, man. That's a yeah. I, I sold it for retail today. <laughs> no, really? Yeah, and I got it from a European guy. In not well, he's in Germany, but he was in Netherlands. He picked it up for me. I got a pretty decent discount. Oh, that's good. Good for you. I would now. I wouldn't wear that if you guys paid me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Hey, yeah, hey, it has a following though, right? There are plenty of people. It that wear it's that cultish, stuff. Yeah. right? It's a cultish following. It works, yeah. I guess. A Korean guy bought it. Yeah. We got the primate gentleman saying, you say VC overseas, I say GP over fleas. Uh, <laughs> now, let me ask, how's the market moving on the Gerard Perigo on the Loriato? I'm telling you, you got to watch Roman's last video. 
they're starting right, to what, rise. Yeah, he he that's complimented TPG saying that he's yeah. basically single handedly like screw you know yes you know hyping the whole market up. Yeah, to, yeah. He's giving him Crazy. a lot of credit. Yeah, he yeah okay, gave so him a lot of respect. Let me ask you about this, right? Is this like some backroom shady deal where they bought up like a ton of Gerard Perigo Laureados, all of them together, and then they're they're just pumping it all up? All of them I, just, I just think he's Roman talking. Roman bought a closeout of eighty five pieces a while back, and he wanted to dump them out. And as soon as DP, he goes, thanks to this guy, I'm selling them now. <laughs> <laughs> And he's making oh, real money. Yeah. He's making real money. <laughs> he's not yeah. wholesaling them now. Yeah. But very little to certain yeah. people. Right. He's yeah. Let him go retail. Good for him. You good know what? Him. Yeah, good on him, man. And let me ask you about one more market, another hype watch, which oh. personally I think is so overrated. And I think we're gonna see it tumble. Oh, the, or it's the already Timex Explorer, the Timex Explorer. We're, we're talking about the expedition. The expedition. 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 I'm talking about oh the Tiffany God. Open. They already softened down to about 30, 29 and a half, 30,000. Crazy, man. So the most it sold for was 42,000 euros. My goodness. And a Japanese guy bought it, which they don't buy 41 mils, but he bought it. Crazy. I mean, it's really crazy. Like, Seven, I told you about that deal. I made the video, right? So yes, I know a collector. I helped him with a dealer where he kind of did a, a part exchange, yes. two watches for Meteorite uh, GMT. And he got it right around Christmas time. So he ended up paying, I think, for the Meteorite, like 70,000, 70, 72,000 US. Okay. And then he did the two trade-ins. He probably had to pay out of pocket, like, I don't know, 20, 30,000. And he traded in a yellow OP and Tiffany OP. Oh so we're talking, God. he that got the meteorite. Right. So he got the meteorite GMT under retail? Under retail. Under retail with the two trade ins. If you find oh, that so dealer paid, who got these two watches, the yellow and the Tiffany, he better dump him fast. Yeah, he pre sold them, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he pre sold them. Because they're softening, guys. There's all the colors, but this one really softened. Yeah. Crazy. I mean, that's just insane. Wow, that guy got lucky. A meteorite for under retail. Wow. It was perfect. Honestly, it was perfect timing. Yes. So it was right around, right, right at, at Christmas, right, right? We did it right I at Christmas. I hope he took care of you. What do you mean he took care of me? I hope he took care of you. <laughs> no, it's fine. He's a, he's a cool guy. Me and him talk like almost every day. Uh, what's it called? Um, yeah, so it was like perfect timing, right? Because obviously Christmas is like great time to sell a watch. Yes. And like we negotiated hard on the meteorite Pepsi and all the pieces. I'm like, listen, just stick to your guns, right? You got it because these are super hot watches. Yes. Uh, so like American dealer ended, or you or European dealer? No, no, US, US, US. Yeah. So so we had. I was like, listen, just stick to your guns. These are the prices we want. If you can get them, he got them. We got the price on the meteorite GMT. We shipped them out and we got the deal done. So it was good. It was. It took like actually a little while. Uh, before he got in the meteorite GMT because they had to find one. Uh, I don't know the one that he had in. Apparently wasn't good. And then these you have to be careful. Huh? These dealers are sharks, right? So I told him because uh, he didn't have the GMT in, and I told him I want you to get in writing that he'll honor his price, right? The price that you guys agreed to on the meteorite GMT because it's very important, right? This way you lock it in. There's no funny business. He can't upcharge you if the prices go up, right? So he got that, and now the market has moved big time. So when he got the GMT, now the only ones on Chrono we see is like 90,000, 92,000. They're all super expensive. He got it for like 70, you know? So I'm like, you have to lock in the price because, as you say, remember that video that you played? Today's price is not yesterday's price or whatever it is. Yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. that's why. You have to lock it in. But, yeah, they're sharks. He wanted to upcharge them. I was like, no, 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 you got to lock in. You have to lock in that price. Uh, your friend Mike says at retail between the Royal Oak Nautilus overseas or Aquanaut. I think the Aquanaut or overseas would be the one for me, just more for my personality. Yeah, you know, you have to be careful though. So the Aquanaut is really nice, I agree with you. But the overseas, I was speaking with a collector. Um, he says the best. There we go. Yesterday's price. <laughs> there, is not today's price. there we go. Um, you have to be careful because that overseas bezel is very scratch prone and it actually collects uh, dirt. So in the, the Oh, edges, in the gaps, in the gaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Hold on, let me pull up a picture. No, I know exactly what you mean there. In the 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 gaps of the bezel actually are very prone to picking up dirt and like, you know, lint and stuff like that. It could actually get very annoying 
And that's one thing he said to me. He's like, listen, I, I love the watch, but it, it's actually starting to bug me that it does that. So, yeah. Aquanaut, I do like. I, I, I'd say, honestly, I'd say Royal Oak first, probably overseas second. Nautilus, if I could get the 5712. Otherwise, I prefer the Aquanaut. Mm. And then I would go, uh, you know, yeah, pretty much. That would be the list. Your friend at retail. Yeah, at retail, of course. I would never pay. I mean, I think only the Royal Oak, honestly. Royal Oak and probably the Nautilus are the two, some Nautilus model. I think the 5711, that you're going to see a hard crash on that too. That's the next one. To be honest with you, Stevano, how's the Nautilus market? Is it still holding up? It is. Huh? Crazy. What so, are we at now? 220, 230? Around there. So are any of these high-flying watches, Stefano, starting to take a bit of a dip? Not the Nautilus, no. No. That has Only the Tiffany OP has really softened, right? Only the OP? Only. Really? Uh, the yeah, Oak, because I mean, the, the OP has gone Mayer up like 20 grand one, in the past year. 130 years. now, the John Mayer. 125, 130. Yeah. Wow. And I showed you guys 64,000 for a dial. Like, yeah. that's just like... Yeah, that's a, that's more I think equal to the price if you go buy it from an AD. When that's insane. It was. <laughs> Mike David. My said question is, where did they get that dial? Somebody yeah. swapped it. Somebody yeah. bought it, didn't like it, took the dial out, put something else because that's the only way. And sixty-four grand, they got their watch paid for. Uh, let's see. We got Anthony Napolitano joining us saying, Marco, when are you going to see me back on the AC3 daily live stream? We need someone that's good at talking about watches on the show. Listen, man, for a $70,000 super chat, I'm there. Anthony, it's all on you. 70000 that's all it's going to cost. <laughs> We've got Stuart Logan saying, who Logan gets a lot of credibility from sponsoring EPL and other Euro events. Yeah, just that watch that Stefano showed, I didn't think looked very nice, to be honest. But I mean, I I, I don't have the hublot hate that other people do. Some no, of the no. stuff they do is actually not. It's actually okay, right? It, it's for certain yeah. cultures, like uh, yeah, very, yeah, yeah, yeah. Asia, yeah. Europe is very strong, and a little yeah. bit yeah. in the Middle East. I love Spirit of Big Bang. If yeah. I had the right price on one, I'd buy it. But I only wanted one, the Bruce Lee special, the Dr Blue Dragon. Right. What's crazy, actually, is that Cap loves the spirit of Big Bang, and I always tell him he's a crazy, crazy person for what. Oh no, it's a beautiful it. watch. I don't. I mean, I just Here, bring, I can't bring get it up. Bring, bring, it up bring, bring it up. Bring it up. The Bruce Lee, I missed it by like two days. I called Seth, where producer Michael shops a lot in Beverly Hills. He had just sold it because I had saw it, but I didn't see the video when it first came out. I missed it. I missed it. I missed it. It looks. Yeah, like they come in multiple low. sizes too. Right, but it looks like a Richard Mill knockoff. Like, no, no. oh, stop it. Come on, you see the screws on the bezel. Yeah, you see the square to no way. Screws on the bezel on the on It's, a, it's, on it's lightly, lightly like a Richard Mill. But I, I understand why you're saying that, Marco. It's similar. I mean, come on. So's Richard Meal. So's Nautilus. So's yeah. AP. You know they all have the screws on. The yeah, case. bring up Stefano's. Uh, uh, yeah, the, I want to see the Bruce Bruce Lee. Lee. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's freaking beautiful, man! Oof, you're gonna have to miss me with this one. No, I wanted the, I wanted the blue. <laughs> you're gonna have to miss the me with one, this one. one. I'm, I'm not into. Oh, gold. you like the blue one? Yeah, I'm not into shimmery gold stuff. And I would have swapped the band to a black one, but yeah, that's black would be nice. Right? Black, black, a black gold. band would have been would have been fantastic. Yeah. this. the blue I don't love, but yeah, the blue, yeah, I'm yeah. not into it. But the watch, yeah, the yeah. dragon, I love it. That's beautiful. Yeah, I actually think it's really nice. Jackie Chan has one. Oh, does he? Yeah, well, I figured yeah. I figured he would. Yeah, yeah, yeah of sense. course. Makes Mike David saying, if you buy an OP for that kind of money, I hope you're money laundering. <laughs> yeah, for forty two thousand euros, I mean, God. yeah, for sure. I can't. Believe, I mean, the fact that for that much money, it had to be pre sold. There's no way somebody's getting caught with a forty thousand euro. And how did your boy get the Tiffany? Was it before the hype? Yeah, he got both before the Tiffany and the and yellow. Did he wear them? No, they were completely no, nice. unworn. Very nice. Yeah, so that's the thing. So the yellow and Tiffany were totally unworn. Um, and you the went great market, obviously. You didn't go to an AD to get the meteorite. No, you went great market on the meteorite. Yeah, because no no AD would have bought those other two watches. Right. And that that's point. yeah, that's that's the that was the thing, right? So the two were super super like perfect, right? 
And the yellow was actually just getting hot around Christmas time too. I mean, all the OPs were getting hot, but especially yeah, yeah. the yellow, which is crazy. Uh, Lou says, but did he give it enough thought? Seems like a no-brainer. I'm not sure what he's referring to. Let me know, Lou, what you're referring to. I'm, I'm kind of lost with this. Hello, the captain. We got the captain. Oh, captain. Oh, captain Seven. Captain, my captain. Hey, guys. He How's heard it? his name and his ears were ringing. So, so can I talk about my hype, my, my hype watches? Yes, please. Yes. So the obvious one, the easy one is the is the Batman, which I consider to be a hype watch given the prices it's going for. You think it's a hype watch? Oh. Hype, man, hype. You won My model, precious. 50 million. What would be your grail hype? Yeah, shoot, shoot the lock off the wallet. Come on, shoot the oh, lock I'm, off I'm the a, wallet. You know I'm a simple man, Marco. Okay, all right, all right, let me think. He what is was, a simple man. He's right. Yeah, what would I... I think he's... Uh, He's not a show off, Ari. Not at no. all. If you want fifty million, you still make so, the Batman and be so, happy with it. All right. So, so the closest that I would come to a, you know, to a high pipe watch. Yeah. You know what? I, I really love JJ's Daytona. Yeah. That the the oyster did the, the, oh, with the oyster. Oh, the flex. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Bring if you could bring that. Do you yeah, remember sure. to, to bring it up? I just yeah. I just got to get this right. We got Big Sal with a fifty dollars oh, super chat. Sal, thank you so much. Saying to my favorite panel. Go to Uncle Stefano first if you're looking for your next beast. He's a true wizard. That's He's a wizard and a true professional. You know, I, I say this, right? Thank you, thank Big you. Sal is a huge place in my heart. I first sold my first watch ever. Like, it was just like a, like, you know, like, uh, he just asked me, like, listen, are you, he, like, selling watches? He watch? popped like, your virginity. Yeah, he popped my, my watch dealing cherry, if you will, <laughs> oh, right? Nice. He popped my watch. He bought a Milgas and an Air King. So I'll never forget. Sal is the man. I love Sal. Sounds what did I walk into? Is this a watch show, channel or is it, we talking popping cherries? <laughs> oh, no. Now GMT is going to come oh, on all excited. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Started it. Once oh, you right. pop a gummy in your mouth and you'll see, you'll feel different. Yeah, that, exactly. That's, that's true. When you, you open the door a crack and GMT just breaks it down. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's really cool. What did I miss? Big Sal, man. Big up yeah, that's big really man. nice. Big Sal, you are the man. I appreciate that. That's very kind, super generous. That is beautiful. You know what? This I is agree. you know this what? Is my I, favorite I'm, Daytona. Honestly, I'm not yeah. a I'm not a Daytona person, but this what JJ got from his from his dealer, this is beautiful. Oh, the dial, I love the dial. Like it's this is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, like this is probably this is the closest to me taking a thermonuclear device to my wallet. This. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this so is, if you want a lot of you buy this watch. I would yeah, buy this watch. I would buy a Batman and I would buy this. Yes. Fuck, it's 78,000. No way. 78? Watch trading co. 77,995. Isn't yeah. retail like 35 for this? No, no, no. Can't the be. wire price is 75,655. Is that a legit site? Well, Stefan, I would know. Here, 116518. Yeah, I mean, there are guys. You know what's even harder to find? Find a solid gold, any color, rose, yellow, or white. Uh, meteorite Daytona today. Forget it. Jesus Here. Christ. It's yeah, a tough choice to pick one on yeah, the order. They're up there, man. They're, they're, that's Crazy. normal. Oh, my There's God. So many on the, not that you can get any of them at retail. 80,000. Yeah, this is the yeah. real price. Look at this. Yeah. Oh, that's insane. Get Holy it. shit. It's 80,000. Yep. Yeah, it's double, double list. Basically, a little 76. less than double list. Wow. Unbelievable. Oh, JJ did very well. Yeah, Holy right. shit. I didn't even realize this was the price of it. Oh my oh, god! Yeah. Not on those. Yeah, I, I actually on the Oyster Flex Precious Metal. I, I, I okay, the Meteorite yeah. I can understand, but I didn't know all the other. Oh no, know, Meteorite! You ain't touching nothing. Not even close. Because they don't come on Oyster Flex now. They meteorite. come solid gold. Okay. Oh, Lou's talking about the Meteorite under retail. He said, but did he give it enough thought? Seems like a no brainer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean. When we saw the deal, like, he, so he asked me, right, because he also won maybe, like, Daytona and stuff like that. It doesn't make sense. Like, Daytona's, even like, around Christmas time, they're just too overpriced, way overpriced. Um, Stuart Logan saying, am I mistaken, or does it seem more, a, hey, listen, I haven't gotten a call, man. I still haven't got. I'm still waiting on the call. I'm still patient. Terrible. It's just terrible. I don't know. I hope I hope the situation is getting better. Um Ada says, like, I'm in wave three, Royal Oak, Nautilus, and Overseas. She likes the Royal Oak, the model, Nautilus, then Overseas. Waiting for Loose now. What's Loose? Loose? I don't know what Loose is. Huh, that's an interesting. Maybe L-U-C Show Park? I don't know. I don't know what the Loose is. But, yeah, I mean, 
Royal Oak is becoming my favorite, to be honest with you. And Big Sal, I just want to say thank you again. That's 50 bucks. That's really uh, very generous of you. Really appreciate that. It says, great panel. Loving the watch talk. Appreciate that. Uh, we got Ryan Singer in the chat saying he upvoted. Yes, guys, please Thank be you, sure Ryan. to hit that upvote button. I really, really sincerely appreciate that. Combat, <laughs> combat the trolls. Uh, we got Aaron Levin says, I was told I could be next on the list for the rose gold chocolate dial today. Goodbye. I think um, I any, like any Daytona, oh, Daytona you can get. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah, Daytona. Oh, I, I was thinking. Daytona. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good good point. I was thinking Daytona. I like that. I like the, the uh, chocolate dial. Oh, it's yeah. beautiful. I think that to me, I, I know that the uh, quote unquote. Not an oyster is, flakes. I preferred all gold. Mm, you prefer the all on bracelet too? On bracelet for the chocolate dial. Oh, I like the oyster yeah, flakes yeah. with the Paul Newman dial, like JJ's. You know what? The, this is very like opulent, though. It's like super opulent. Hold on. It's oh, yeah. very. It's the grail. I mean, that's, that's a grail. Hold on. Why is all these pictures so bad? Um, that's a look at me too. Even though it's the rose, the ever rose, it's still yeah. that that's going to attract attention. It's going to make them. It's going to make. You know a what though? You'd be surprised. <coughs> like it definitely does. There's no question. But the the amount of attention you get is is actually quite muted, considering. Um, yeah, it, it's actually it's actually it's very subtle. The 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 hue of the rose is just very warm and inviting. Yeah. It's very rich, very like luxurious, but it's not. Yeah. Yeah. Look at me, type of type of lust. The yellow is more. Yellow. Yeah, yellow, yellow definitely pops more. No question about it. But that bezel, what happened? <laughs> What's going? We got a fifty dollars super chat from CB. Thank you so much. Saying I'm surprised you guys really talk about FP Jorn. Good talk, anyway, guys. Yeah, we could get into FP Jorn, no question. But he has Sorry, a chicken. Oh, we talk about FP Jorn. Yeah, sure. we'll, we will definitely we will touch. I just want to get SLC and then let's talk FP Jorn. But yeah, uh, she said Oyster Flex. So he would get on Oyster Flex. I mean, this is still awesome. I think this is gorgeous. 100%. Jump on it if you can. Yeah, definitely. Any Daytona is better than no Daytona. I agree. No, not really. But... What, I, <laughs> what I loved about the Rose, the Ever Rose, is usually in the oh. bezel. I don't like yeah, steel the lady, oh, oh. Yes, oh, wow. This is a gorgeous piece. Yeah, this is a this is a gorgeous, gorgeous piece for ladies. Oh, yes. For ladies, yes. Perfect. Yeah, it's a great watch. Is that, that, are that, is that factory? Factory diamonds? Yes, yes. Factory, yes, diamond? factory yeah. diamonds. Yeah, it's all factory set. Yeah. And they only use Wesselton, so they use top-notch diamonds. diamonds. So they're diamonds. perfectly consistent. Per oh, yeah, they're perfect right. size to the millimeter, to the yeah. micrometer. Yeah. Yeah. Same color, same clarity, everything. So, Stefano, I have a question. Yes, sir. So, you know, with Rolex, they uh, they have their own foundry, right? So they make their own yeah. gold and, and yeah. everything else. And I know they're very, very, very particular about the diamonds they use. The beers. Thank you. They buy everything for I one. Have to, I didn't even have to ask the question any answer. One answered. specific division that only caters to them. Got it. Antwerp. Right. They go to Antwerp yearly. Well, month, probably every couple of months. Oh, oh. No, so no, very quick. I want to talk CB because CB sent this extremely generous $50 super chat. I really appreciate it. CB is the man. He's been supporting me like since the very beginning. One of the nicest dudes you're ever me. And his collection is about as fuck you as it gets. Holy shit. So <laughs> uh, I'm telling you, maybe the very best I've ever seen, to be honest. I know like Cars has a great collection also, but like CB is right up my my alley. Like, oh, fuck. Like super um, esoteric pieces that no one else would like? Is that what you're saying? No, no, no. He has, he I'm has joking. like I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. He has a very good mix. Yeah. Rogers Anyways. I'm joking. Totally joking. So yeah. what's it called? FP Jorn is definitely in that realm of hype watch, in my opinion, especially – it's actually funny, right? There's a lot of independents that are becoming like this where you know those kind of Instagram dickheads who who want to say, "Oh, I'm not I'm not a hype watch collector," right? But then they go after all the hyped independent watch brands. Does yeah. that make sense? FP Jorn, they have like all the FP Jorns, Roger Smith, like everything that's like a 5-year wait list and that sells double retail. <laughs> uh, Philip Dufour, the simplicity, you know, it's just like it's an even higher Google level like 4C. 
Yeah, that's that's kind of how about a grown fellow Principia? Is that is that there yet with height? Not the Principia, but actually, if we're talking grown uh, what's it called? The um, the Remontoir is big. Let's money. Think this. They, so they would see with that. Oh yeah, let me let me get to that. But yeah, the Gronfeld Remontoir <laughs> is big money. That's big, beautiful. Big money. Man. This is with a Kari dial. Actually. That is this has gorgeous. Kari- Oh, I, can see, I can see the guilloche. Uh, yeah, and this pattern. movement is second to none. This is actually all steel. Ooh. Wow. So it's all all oh. the bridges as opposed to like brass or you know other materials that Man. you might use. It's actually oh steel. God. Look at the uh, is that perlage on that uh, on that uh, wheel? No, it's not perlage. Uh, <laughs> <Vodicola>. <laughs> <laughs> on that, I like the way the are you talking right? about the spiral. Sure. The spiral yeah, yeah, yes. yes, yes, on the gear. Mm-hmm. It's um, what's it called? I for, it's it's just called spy. So it's uh, just a type of um, treatment that they do. I, I forget the the name of the finish. It's just spiral, oh, yeah. spiral sanitation. Ari did it on the uh, the Roma Synergy. Um, did a on. specific type of um, yeah. We got a shot in the dark, Jonas. Hello, shot. And we got Bubba Hotep saying, "What's up, dudes? Today is a great day." Yes, Bubba Hotep. Congrats on the amazing. Uh, rose gold green dial day date, man. What oh, a that's pickup. beautiful. Uh, that's a beautiful and, watch. Very oh, impressed, man. Very he's, impressed. He's asking me a question. As a business major slash scholar, do you like ascending or descending numbers slash valuation? I mean, that's a good question. So you have to factor it into today's market, right? I mean, over the last 10 years, we've witnessed basically an unseen bull market. And I don't know what industry we're talking about, right? But if we're talking about descending valuation, Unless it's only occurred in the last two or so years in a business that's been severely impacted by COVID, um, I would say ascending numbers is the only thing. Uh, like, it, if you're descending numbers in this kind of market, it, it's bad. That's a, that's a very rough sign. I'm sorry to say. Yeah, I'll give you an example in private equity, venture capital. Yeah. They always like to see up rounds, right? If your Series A, Series B, Series C, Series D are all at a higher price, yeah. at a higher valuation. That's a good sign. And those companies right. typically go public for gazillions of dollars. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? I don't even know what is going on. I don't even That's know what is going on. I don't Holy know what's shit. happening. We've got Baba Hotep with $123.45 saying, okay, thank Jesus. Good choice, Marco, for me and my bank account. It could have gone pear-shaped really oh. for me. Yeah, I mean – Listen, there are some there are some industries that have been like really badly impacted, like anything transportation wise. Right. Like if we're talking aviation, if we're talking, you know, like freight, like, you know, uh, Uber or stuff like that, like like businesses that require transported cars, uh, anything of that genre, I think, has been actually badly impacted by COVID. So it depends the industry. But man, over the last since 2008, basically, we've been on a, a gravy train. You know what like cruise, li- cruise lines. Theme park. Yes, like, cruise lines, another one. Theme container park. ships, man. Yes. Last so, year, I bought a a twenty foot container from China for sixty eight hundred US. Uh, uh, no, two thousand twenty. Two thousand twenty one in March, I paid twenty seven thousand for the same container. Wow. And now they're on bid. Bid on the container. That's insane. Yeah, yeah. but China is suffering because nobody wants to buy goods right now because of the the shipping. So if I yeah. bought this, for te- if you bought this for me ten ten dollars last year, this year it's thirty five dollars because of the shipping. Who's gonna do that? But yeah, Baba Hotel. Like, <laughs> this is insane. I don't even know what the fuck is going on tonight. But thank you so much for the hundred twenty three dollars. It's extremely generous of you. One, two, you see what he did? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, Very, three, four, five. <laughs> should I should have said I should have said descending? It's five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Oh that. shit! <laughs> oh no, wow, that's hilarious. Actually, you can't do that. I think there's a five hundred dollar limit, right? There is. <laughs> Very generous, Bubba. Very yeah, generous. Thank you so much, Bubba. That's extremely nice. <laughs> oh, that's good. Actually, I didn't catch. I didn't catch that cap. You're the one who just pointed that out. Yeah. I well, didn't I didn't catch you know, the descending number. Or I like. Yeah, it's funny because you tied that in. I didn't. I didn't get it. Yeah, I thought it was like an actual business question. That's why I actually yeah, took it seriously. I saw the number. But... Right. I just took it serious right. for a question for a minute. Okay, but I want to get back to this really quickly. Yeah, I, sure. I will come back to um value for money, C B deserve. Um, yeah, so FP Jorn is becoming like you know, like <clears throat> 
it's a very obvious choice for somebody who wants to get into an ind independent. Uh, that's not to say that they don't make great watches though, right? So that's the problem. We need to separate hype and like, why are these watches hyped to begin with? And I think there is definitely a, a reason why this watch is hype, in my personal opinion. Does that make sense? Because first of all, they're extremely rare, extremely exclusive. They're made by a master watchmaker, you know, who is, you know, arguably one of the very best living watchmakers today. I think, I think there's a huge collector base out there that enjoy the designs because they're extremely, you know, people have started to copy his kind of designs and the style of his watches. Uh, but at the time, I think they're extremely unique. Nobody was doing anything like him. I think he's right up there as the watchmaker who is really, in my opinion, kind of revolutionized the independent space you know like it, it's made it he's made it cool to own an independent watch brand hmm. so even though it is hyped i think there are merits to the hype does that make sense unlike for example say a nautilus or or i don't know like right. an oh, Aquino, you know you know what i mean like there's a real reason there's a, there's a tangible reason that you can point to to say okay you know this is rare for a hmm. reason x y and z and this is why it's actually worth the money as opposed to something else. So, so let, let me ask let me ask a question then about for, for FP Journe. I, I admit the designs are beautiful. I will agree that they're really nice. The, what about the movements themselves? Like are they oh. are they equally as well done? Are they reliable? you know, I mean right. reliability, I guess, doesn't matter at the I guess when you're buying something like this, but you know, do they fall apart when you breathe on them too hard or you know, I'm just oh, curious. No. <laughs> Look at this. Yeah, that's the joke, Marco. It would have been $432. Oh, Jesus Christ. Damn it, Captain. You should have saved me. This is when you I know. I'm going to take the other side. I had no idea. No, descending numbers. Descending numbers. I'm, I'm wondering, is he, is he joking or is that true? Because that's like, uh, <laughs> that hurts. Uh, I appreciate it, Andy. I mean, this is extremely, this is super nice of you. I appreciate it. Bubba, do you have a, do you have a question for us? Let, let's answer you. Let's give you some value for money, at least. Oh, but he said descending. I, I, I said ascending. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, give, give us a question. I want to answer a question. I do want to answer a question for you. Uh, we got George Jace in the chat saying, I have the black dial. It's understated for a gold watch. I agree. I think he's talking about the Daytona 100%. So, Mike, I like the Octosport too. Stefano, don't you have the Octosport or did you quick sell that one? You sold it? Oh. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's too good a price. Oh, um, yeah. Um, if it's FP Jorn, Octus. So that's the problem, right? Um, can I be honest? These kind of watches, I, I don't like actually. So I'm on I'm on the opposite side. I like okay. some of the Octos. I think that the there's one in particular. I don't like yeah. the yellow. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I'm not I'm not with that's you, the but... one I had, that's the one I sold. So here's the thing, right? Um, with a watch like this, FP Jorn is a very classical watch brand. It doesn't it's like they sell out to the hype market by, by doing a watch like this. Does that make sense? But yep. you need a functional sports watch for collectors. So I understand why they do it. But I, I much prefer like these, not this color, this one right here. The chronograph, I think, is spectacular. And there's a split right. second one. Um, <coughs> yeah, that wouldn't be my direction. I'd, I'd go more traditional, Jorn, you know, Octolone. Right. And, and that is what they're known for. This one yeah. right here. Black label, baby. I think this is unbelievable right here. Oh, that's another level. I was actually t talking with um, a collector privately. Actually, I don't want to mention his name, but yeah. Um, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, he, he really loves his piece. I think they quoted him only a couple of years to get this, which is very, I mean, that's amazing. And this is cheap, like cheap in the sense that I think the retail on this is like hundred and something thousand. I mean, you're still getting a split second chronograph from FP Jorn. Like, if you're going to Paddock, how much is a split second chrono? Minimum two, two fifty. Crazy. I gotta be honest, though. I'm, I'm not. If I'm going chronograph, I'm not gonna go. I'm not going in this direction. Mm, why not? Me. Hey, um, design. Design. Oh, look at this. Angie nope. hits the nail on the head. A PRX deserves the hype. Absolutely. There we go. Oh my God. RAG. Thank you so much. So the four th four dollars and thirty two cents. That makes up, for it. That makes up for it. 
Here's your descending. I appreciate it. You know what I'm still waiting for? I'd love to see someone do a $420.69 super chat. <laughs> for no, that's a party. That's yeah, a party. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that would be hilarious. But no, no, please don't. Please don't. No, uh, no. It's just a, just a gag. Maori, thank you so much for the super chat. If I were doing 420, I would do it, but I don't have that. I only buy over-the-counter uh, gummies. Good. <laughs> Bobo type says 432. Oh, bad. <laughs> no, bad, yeah. bad, bad, bad. No, actually, we, we found oh, that out when he said yes, that. Oh, that was as long as, you know. <laughs> so we found that out when he said his favorite hype watch was a Batman. I was like, what? Batman? Come on. That's when you know Arn doesn't need a DNA. Day. You got to shoot the lock off the wall at Arn. No. It's, 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 it's a, yeah, it's about what you need. It's about what yeah. you need. Yeah, it's functionality, right? It's, I mean, yeah. let's be honest. It's nice to have a two hundred plus thousand dollar watch, but I, yeah. I'm sure even those people who own it are are like, whoa, you know, I got I got to think twice. I'm, I'm sure I'm they're not see. changing the oil with that watch on. You know what right. I mean? So, well, you got to yeah. think twice about where you wear it if you go out in public with it. You know, it's it's just it's not a very what's it called usable watch. <laughs> it's, no, it's just not. We got Mike David saying FP Jordan is innovative and accurate, not necessarily pretty movements. What? Whoa. Okay. Oh, whoa, so, whoa. No, no, no. I got it. I got it. So, so this, so this was my comment when I was asking about the movements. Like, are they beautiful mm -hmm. movements? Are they reliable movements? Well, Maybe yeah. it doesn't matter when you're talking at that level, but yeah, let's. I think it's a. I agree with Mike David's uh, uh, point, or at least at least the, he's asking a question in there. I would yeah. say. Did you just see the rose gold, gold movement, Marco? Okay, so I will movement. say this. FP is not necessarily known for his insane movement finishing, right? He's actually just not. He's he more so known. Uh, actually, I'm actually, you're I talking would, grand comps. Yeah, not in grand comps. I wouldn't say in grand comps. He doesn't. No. Be, he definitely doesn't be Paddock. He's not known for his watch finishing. Actually, Langa is Langa. So, Langa is one of them. Sure. Um, what he's known for is like his watchmaking ability, right? So I think he's done, I don't know, 10, 15 plus calibers in the last 20 or so years. And that's really where like, it's very impressive because he's making like super high level, super complicated movements. Um, I don't think he really does movements anymore, but you know, like 10 years ago he was. Um, so yeah, that this is really what he's known for finishing wise. I think it's still good. It's very nice. Um, but it's not something he's known for. He is right. I still think that they are very pretty, though. I do disagree with with Mike. Sorry, Mike. Yeah, Angie is is right. Masso said FP Jorn are sometimes machine fin They are machine finish, actually. You you yeah. can look actually at their brass movements. If you look at the brass movements, it's actually pretty bad. And those are the most expensive ones. <laughs> Excuse me, I gotta get something. I don't recall. I forgot what Masso, uh, who he was saying, has better finishing. Uh, cause he was also, yeah, he wasn't, hold on one second. He wasn't Gaga over the finishing on a joint. Like if you mm. look at this, there's actually that's zero. A very ba that's a very basic movement though. Like for, no, this is not a basic move. This is a tourbillon souverain. I mean, aesthetically though, it's, it's. Yeah. It looks basic, not, but it's not at all. A, right. It's all covered like Lange does right with the Lange ones. They put the plate almost a full plate covering the movement. Um, why can't I find a good picture? God damn it. One second. I want to find a good picture of it because it's actually, it's not great to be honest. Their finishing is not that good. There's actually zero beveling at all done to the, the watch itself. Let me just see if there's anything here I can use. Here we go. Okay. So this will actually be a good picture. Here, look how rough it is. There's like zero, absolutely no bevels at all. And it's just like a rough, like this is not a, this is not a nicely finished watch, just being honest, right? That doesn't mean it's not a great watch. No, I think the dial wise, I mean, this is very unique, you know, but yeah. uh, you know, yeah. I was more curious about what's underneath it. Is it like a, Yeah. I, I'm making a joke when I say this, but you know, is it like an Edda underneath with slightly nicer no. or is it something really nice, you know? No, Edda. So. I mean, what's, what's interesting about Jorn, I guess a lot of these independents, is Jorn has his signature that cannot be duplicated. Yes. That, that style and design and his artistic and creativity. I think it's great. Is, yeah. Is unique. It's, it's, there's no other way. Like, if someone copied that, I don't, I don't even know how they could do it. Um, I guess they could try, but like a Submariner is 
often duplicated, you know, or often replicated, right. never duplicated. Like you can basically use those for inspiration or have homages or kind of steal the design. Um, but with a Jorn and I guess, you know, and some of the other independents, like Debatoon has their unique style. I'm just using them as an example, as right. something out there. And the finishing of Debatoon is, is much like it's beyond actually FP Jorn, in my opinion. Uh, right. I just want to add this for quickly. CB five dollars saying Marco, the initial FP Jorn were very basic finish. The last ten years has been a Krishana. Yeah, they were super bait, like they were not known for finishing at all. All his kind of I guess genius was in the fact that you can make really high level cal calibers. Um now CB, if you don't mind, I need to ask you, can I just pull up that picture that you just sent me? Just let me know in the chat. Um if you don't just just let me know. I, I want to pull it up for the viewers. And we got your friend Mike with a five dollar saying for the watch talk. Thanks, fellas. Thanks to you guys, man. Jeez, it's been a crazy stream. I don't even know what is going on. Uh, the watches, guys. It's the watches. Exactly. Oh, watches. Exactly. Watches. Stay on point with this show. No bullshit. There we go. We got George J saying MBNF really grew on me. The designs are one of a kind. CB said yes. Oh yes, I can. Okay, great. Um, here we go. So he just sent me this picture right here. This is probably my favorite FP Jorn. It's the Chronomat Optimum. Um, we'll get back to MBNF. So this is right here where you see the dead the the seconds around here. This is mm -hmm. actually the remotoir. So it powers a deadbeat seconds on the back uh, that he just keeps it on the back itself. But if you see the finishing, so what I mean by anglage, right? That's yeah. the beveling on the actual bridge. You see like this contour. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's probably the like one of the hardest finishing techniques. And if you'll see, now the finishing isn't very pronounced, but it's very nice. You know, it mm -hmm. is very, very nice and it will be near perfect. But you compare that, for example, with a Philip Dufour. Hold on. Simplicity. You compare that with the simplicity. Now, if you look at these bevels, right, they're much sharper. They're like a mile wide. Hold on. This is a bad picture. Yeah, they're not as refined. Right. The FP Jorn movement is not as refined. Right. This right. is much like you see, like you see how the polishing on the, the yeah. end of the bridges is much nicer. Like oh, yeah, that's like a heavy polish. And this yeah. is what he's known yeah. for, right? And that's where FP kind of he lacks behind in the independence. He's not really known for this level high of finishing. Yeah. That's are, there even, are there interior angles on these? On this yes. one? Yes. Here. So there's one interior angle, two Four interior angles, three interior angles. Yep. Yeah, three. That's the four, actually, right here. This is the fourth one. Yeah, okay. This is, yeah. Right. Oh, there might be so, five. Look at the, uh, on the other side, there might be one. No, there's no other one. Yes. And, and again, this has nothing to do with the quality of the, no, the timekeeping. This is this is a pure flex. This right. is a pure flex. So yeah. like, this is another one that, who's really known for his finishing, right? And this is, like, incredible. So... If you look at this, again, it's the same idea, right? Like the beveling here, so you see one interior angle, two interior angle, three, four, um, five right here, six, hmm. seven interior angles, right? Oh, actually, there's eight and nine eight up here. Nine. Yep. Yeah, so we're talking like, for those who don't know, the hardest finishing technique is that. It's, it's in, like where a bevel meets a corner, and then you have to like polish away because you're yeah. scraping material away, and you have to be so precise and it's just that's not what FP is known for. He's known for his watchmaking prowess, like his ability to create yeah. movements. And like this right here is to me like it's just beautiful. It's like a work of art, but it's not necessarily finished to the extent of a Dufour or some right. of these other guys. That's pretty damn good, and that's it's still nice. Really impressive. It yeah, looks impressive. yeah. SLC has a great question. What yeah. brand has the best finishings? The Look best, the best of the best. There's only one. Are also, the detail underneath the oh, gears. Well, here we go, go. back for a second. Which one? Can you go oh, back to two slides, please. Well, did he kick himself off? Yeah. Did he? Man. Did he? I don't think he meant. Did he mean to do that? <laughs> no, I didn't mean to do that. Sorry about that. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, you want me to pull up the FP again? I thought we had Uncle Stefano to fill in the air time. I, I clicked. I clicked the back button on the wrong tab. Here we go. Say that. What did you want me to say? I was going to say, if you go, I guess, next to or under the gears. Under um, the gears. Well, there's a lot of gears there, but you see that? Yeah, that right there, that um, detailing 
on the, uh, I guess, the, the fish scale. side. You see all those little stampings, the stamping the, pattern? The fish scales. Fish scales on one side. Yeah, and the other side looks a little bit different. It looks different. Maybe maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Um, no, it's just, so here. So this right here is yep. called perlage. Perlage. So, perlage. Yes. So the perlage here is just done uh, more spaced out versus here where it's right. done much more close together. And yep, all yep. it's done, they actually just use like a stamping machine with a diamond cut tool, and then yep. they just stamp it onto onto the actual base plate of the movie. It's just really nice the the way he even does two different sizes. Yeah, um, it, it does really really nice, um, really nice finish actually, super nice. But yeah, so SLC asks, what brand has the best finishing? By far, it's Grubel. Grubel Forcey is known by far to have the best finish in the industry, and it's not even close. There's actually somebody who has a really great YouTube channel. If you're interested in this kind of stuff, his name is, uh, I think on YouTube is TikToking. Uh, it's, hold on. I'll link it in the chat. He's one of the very best watch channels for independence. Probably my favorite, to be honest with you. And he's starting to make more and more uh, videos again, which he stopped for a while, which was kind of shitty. But uh, hold on. Let me look him up. Oh, Mike David mentioned that... Uh... Yeah, Masa was mentioning uh, Moritz Grossman. Moritz Grossman. Sure. They're good too. They're they're definitely they're definitely good. But yeah, if you're interested, uh, even like he says, I think his top three are Grubel Forsey, Philip Dufour, and um, the other one is Kari. Kari Budalina is actually his third in, in his top three. Uh, I will also pull up one that is super underrated in my opinion. It's Ferdinand Bertude. Which is just their level of finish is insane, and the complications they do is is crazy too. So this has, for example, a tourbillon and a chain and fusée. So you see right here, this is your chain and fusée plus a tourbillon, super ultra complicated. And look at how polished, how finely polished that tourbillon bridge is. It's wow. super small. Like you can imagine how in real life how small that is. This is another crazy piece. You see, like all the hammering on the bridges. This this contraption right here at the bottom is a remotoire de galite, and then you have a constant force device. It's the chain and fusée up here. I don't like their designs, to be honest. I think the designs are kind of ugly. Um, they're actually really ugly. But <laughs> the the watchmaking involved is is super high level. You know, it's super super high level. And then I think probably in the top five also is someone another collector has been. Uh, looking at is this right here is long and high and crazy finishing. I mean, this is just crazy, crazy, crazy high level finishing. Super underappreciated Germans. Uh, German, they're out of Germany. This is Marco Lang. I've talked about this brand before. Um, I think you'll remember Cap. Remember the hind part? He left to go be a movement developer at Nomos, and so it was just yep. Marco Lang. But he's re he recently left also. Yeah, I read that. Which is interesting because there's no more, neither of the founding members. Of, yeah, they're both gone. They're out of there. And Lang and Hanukkah. Yeah. Look at this. This is a split second mono pusher chronograph. It's out of this world. It's called the Which album. is kind of interesting. I wonder if that will, for, you know, for, for collectors, Look at this. increase the value of the, yeah. of the pieces when they were there. And I wonder what happens to the brand now that they're gone. It's just, it's like Patek Philippe both leaving Patek Philippe while they're alive. Uh, yeah, I guess so, but not really. I mean, it'll still be okay. They're still doing, they're still using the same techniques, you know, and making the same watches that they were before. Mike, I didn't forget you. I will pull up Moritz Grossman. We got <clears throat> CB with a $5 saying the escapement and the remotoire are the, yeah. So here, I'll pull up again. Uh, wow. This is rapid fire indie segment. My favorite. I love talking about this stuff here. So this right here. Oh, shit. I should pull up his picture one second. So the... Uh, one second, one second. Okay. Here we go. Okay, so this right here, right? What he's pointing at is a remontoir is this here. So what's driving this deadbeat second? So it's an elaborate gear train, right? And what it does is... 
it takes power from the actual barrel, which is, or the mainspring rather, which is, you know, kind of what releases torque to eventually the, the actual escapement and eventually allows the balance to beat, right? And what the remontoir does is it ticks one time per second, and that's what allows it to uh, power the deadbeat second. And it's constant force, so it del delivers a constant amplitude over time to the main, uh, sorry, from the mainspring to the actual watch's ex ex escapement. And what that allows is basically just a more precise, accurate timekeeping. That's really right. all it is. It's super elaborate gear train just for more accurate timekeeping. They used to use this, I believe, is in the 1400s for clocks, right? Um, because you can imagine like clocks, uh, clock towers that were close to the sea. If there was a really bad storm, um, you know, it can it can really severely impact you know the timekeeping of that actual clock, right? And so they needed devices like this, a remontoir, to basically have a huge amount of power so that you know the clocks could keep going even with you know there were stormy conditions. Um, so that was one one time that they were used. Obviously, I think they were sometimes used um, in pocket watches, but they're not not hugely used. It was mostly mostly in clocks, as far as I know, remontoirs. But yeah. This is uh, definitely one of his more complicated. And then he's obviously also known for the resonance, right? Which <coughs> is hugely probably his most popular watch, I would say. Which again, is, is crazy. It's a crazy watch. The way it works is insane too. Oh, FP Journal. FP Journal. And Mike David saying Grossman. Yes, let me pull up Grossman very quickly. They're nice. They're really nice. Here, hold on. But most people would rather get a platinum Daytona than get one of those. Right. Nobody nobody really wants I mean they're not nobody, <laughs> but you know, they're not hugely popular. Like this is super nice. So if you look at this, it's what's known as a two thirds plate as opposed to three quarter plate, which is what Longa uses. So um Moritz Grossman actually went for a two thirds plate, and then you see all the hand engraving and all the bridges here and the balance cock as well. They actually don't use like regular ruby jewels. It's a different kind of jewel. I forget what it is, the material, but you know, they use all gold chatons as well. Super expensive and you know, totally unnecessary by modern watchmaking standards, but you know, just it's, to go the extra mile. Sure. And this is also super impressive. Hold on. I gotta pull this up. Hematic. This is probably my favorite from the brand. <coughs> So it's a super elaborate system. Uh, I've talked about this on the channel as well. Um, the way it works is you see this big kind of cage right here. So it'll actually swing back and forth like a pendulum, the whole cage, like that big cage. And that's the way it actually powers the watch. It's the old, it's one of the first ways that like automatic watches were were powered. It's crazy contraption made by originally by Abraham Louis Breguet. And then it's only been done two other times. So once was by Michelle Parmigiani in a pocket watch. And this is the first time it's ever been done in a wristwatch now. To me, this is the best watch they make. This right here, the Hematic, is crazy. It's a crazy piece. I mean, you can imagine how difficult this must be to develop. It's such a, like a delicate system. It must be such a delicate system. What are the prices on these, Moritz? What caliber is that? It's it's automatic actually. It's not manual winding, which is crazy. I'll tell you the price one second. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. It's forty thousand euros. So like forty five US, something like yeah. that, right? And okay. Hmm. Yeah. CB says the resonance goes for half a mil now. Crazy. Wow. It's crazy. I don't know what that is actually. I've heard of it. I think. Whoa, I've actually never seen this before, but I know of it. Crazy piece, Mike. Look at this. I think this is by Grossman. Wow. Whoa. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. Look at the hand engraving. Oh, my God. That's beautiful. That's in so intricate. Like a mini city. Now, Mike, tell me what this is, because I actually don't even... Is this like a tourbillon? I don't even know. Is this just a regular... Actually, this looks like just a regular escapement. It just 
It's a huge balance, though. I've never, I don't think I've ever, I've heard of it, but I've never seen it. I actually need to look into this a little more. Whoa, it's a crazy piece. By the way, you know what this little thing is? This pusher right here? You see this pusher at like three Yeah, what, what's that for? What's that for? Okay, so when you take out the crown, right? Um, You actually, it's hacking, right? So it actually yeah. returns the, the seconds back to zero. And when you want to reset the watch, instead of having to do like shifty moves with the crown, you just press that button and it will restart and then you can screw the crown back in. Does that make sense? Ah, okay, okay. So when you pull out the crown on um, some of the models, I don't know if it does it for this one, but there is like a running seconds and it, what it will do is it will flick back to zero. So it's a zero, uh, zero second reset. Mm -hmm. And then you push that button whenever you want to restart the watch and then just screw back the crown in. Which is awesome. Right. I think that's a cool way to restart your watch. That is kind of neat. Unnecessary though, right? It's not like there's many watches that do it like that. You know why though, right? So it's like, you know, when you see the, the time flip and you're like struggling to push in the crown, right? So that your watch is like perfectly dead on time. Yeah. It's much easier to just push that button on the side and, and, then and, your watch and align goes. it and then, okay. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You can set it very, very easily. Jeff Johnson saying Marco giving Maso run for his money on horology spectrum. Learning a lot this evening. Very impressive. Thanks, Jeff. It's very, very kind. Of yeah, I mean, I talked about a lot of these. What I mean, this Moritz Grossman that I just pulled up, the Adam Skelton. I'm gonna. I need to write that down, or I'll. Walk Thanks, back Jeff. I don't know if you're gonna be able to to get out of your room today. You might not. You might not be able to fit out of your uh, fit out of your oh. door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've talked about a lot of these watches, but yeah, these are. I mean, it's expensive, though. That's the Captain, thing. you want to see that watch? Go to Cellini. The I have guy to see it. When, uh, Dude, when they only have three. One in Michigan, one I'm, in Colorado. I'm waiting until, uh, until the Savant, until, uh, until the young Jedi comes, uh, comes in. I need to, I'm going to I, – I, I, this year, oh, there's right no question, me. we are doing a meeting, a meetup in New York. I, I sure. feel like if I go to Cellini, I'll have to pick up an independent when I'm there. I don't Oof. know. I just for some reason I just I'm not a not a crazy one. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. I mean, within within reason. Well, Shoot no the log off the wallet. There's no cheap yeah. independence, Captain. There's zero cheap independence. That's true. I can't. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, cheap is not a good word for it. But reasonably inexpensive. reasonably priced, inexpensive. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. If inexpensive is a good, is the right word either. Right. Reasonably yeah. priced. Yeah. The they, problem is, Cap, is we kind of missed the boats on independence. Like a lot of these have gone up big money in value. Um, like when I say big money, like a lot, a lot of money, especially oh, yeah. the ones Cellini are Cellini have in, in store. Yeah, you're left with the Roma Synergy by Carrie. <laughs> Actually, it's by Schwartz Etienne. It's not right. by Carrie. When you well buy Cap by Vudalainen is on the <laughs> Schwartz Etienne by way of Kari he's, Vudalainen. He's regretting that deal. I guarantee you that. He's probably no. Like, I mean, it's still a nice here. Hold on. No, Let's compared to what you compared to what you've shown, this is why I can't get behind it. I mean, it's it's, it's a different lead. It's, yeah, it's, it's here's the problem, right? So and it's, it's not just, expensive. It's a thirty thousand or thirty one thousand dollar piece. It's not cheap. That's the problem. Like you can get and, a Principia by Gronfeld, which is well, much for a similar thousand. price pre owned. Do you know what I mean? They're at sixty thousand a Principia. That's the pre owned Gronfeld. price. But I'm talking about the pre owned price of this. The Synergy, the Roma Synergy. Is what thirty five thousand on the secondary market? Hold on, let's uh, thirty one. Okay, thirty one thousand. The Principia <laughs> in steel. 30. I think the Principia in steel is oh God. I can't remember the price. Like thirty five thousand euros. We should. I want to see what the panel. Thinks. Pretty close. Take take them through this watch and let them see the movement. And I know the actually the blue one is of course blue dials go for premiums. I think that's even higher. That might be thirty eight. But I'm not 100% sure on that. I know the gray one is around 30. See, the thing is, right? I actually like this watch a lot. It reminds me of a Philip Dufour simplicity in its case yep. and dial. But the, the dial is obviously done by Kari. Um, and then the movement is so-so. Movement so-so. I mean. So here's the problem, right? There's no bevels. There's zero bevel. Like there's none at all. It's just very coarse. Hmm. All the bridges are not finished at all. They're sandblasted, though. The SC, the rotor. Yeah, that's not, that is nice. I agree, but... That's different. It's, 
the bridges themselves on the edges of the bridges there's zero polishing and that's yeah. a huge issue in my opinion huge issue for a 30 uh, plus thousand dollar watch captain if marco in the private chat and put a link if he pulls that up you'll see the brands you'll go when you see cellini and i know marco would love to be in that store to see those brands all right let's see oh, I would imagine i'm not the biggest fan of arnold and son has nice stuff depends what you're looking at bove eh, it's okay Chopek, I love. De Bethune, great. Ferdinand Bertut, we just talked about. Probably one of the best finished watches in the industry. Google for GP, GP, even has GP. <laughs> we, can skip, we can skip over GP. Grunfeld, <laughs> absolutely gorgeous. Do you like Moser? Do you like Moser? Moser is spectacular. JLC, oh, okay. nice. Crayon, unbelievable. Look at this. We even have Torsty Lane. Torsty Lane, Torsty. cat. Torsty. Why why get, so, paid, yeah, why get it personalized when you can just buy one that's already Ra cool. Langenheim, unbelievable. Ludovic Balloir is another one. Look. Incredible. We have Maybe Parmigiani. Gorgeous. Parmigiani. Moritz. Ooh. Parmigiani Grossman. is... Uh, We're just looking at. Insane. Resence, Resence is avant-garde bullshit. I hate Resence. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just Roger kidding. The, you the, missed, yeah, MBNF. MBNF. I, I did say, I mean, I've, Roger Dubuis has some nice stuff, although it's not very good nowadays. Uh, Romain Gauthier, excellent. Look at this. Urban Jerk Yourself. Urban Jurgensen. <laughs> I love it. With a liner, baby. With a oh, liner, <laughs> there it is. And Car my Vidal. boys, number oh, one. <laughs> Unbelievable they have it. the best for last. Oh, look at this. You can actually get one. You it's can order line. them from him. What do you think, yep. Cap? I like Take the first one on the left. I do too. Take a look at the Voodoo line. Once yeah. you know, this is unbelievable. What do you think the prices are for those? Hundred, close to a hundred, probably. Oh yeah, for sure. White gold, yeah, it'd be close to a hundred. That's really nice, actually. Not my favorite. I think this is probably an enamel center. Let's see. I must say, dial black. In oh, onyx center, nice. That's really nice. Uh, let's go through some of these. Urwork, obviously. I'm sure most people know what Urwork is. In town. Don't worry, Captain. It'll cost you 100 bucks to park, but it's all good. He's on park in 56th. Oh, so. Just very quickly, cool. we got Turtle and I saying Captain should have just sat on for a Ming. <laughs> uh, <laughs> be a lot so, cheaper. I couldn't get one. I couldn't get yeah, one. Yeah, no Rolex. We don't want Rolex. And we got Bubba Hotel saying good night, twice. guys. Long and very emotional draining day. Dead tired too much. Hey, Bubba, I really appreciate it, man. You take yourself, uh, take care of yourself. Have a good night, and I appreciate you stopping by this evening. And again, really appreciate the extremely like kind and generous super chat. <laughs> yeah, ninety-nine percent sure I have whiskey dick, so no need to be awake any longer. Right? Yeah. That's a good reason good to go to sleep. Good reason to go to sleep. Yes. <laughs> Ooh, your friend Mike with the hard-hitting question is Daniels consider hype? I think they are worth it, but only, it is only hype. In Y circles, no. So here's the problem with Daniels, right? There's only a f maybe I don't even know how many. What's the count on how many there are out there by George Daniels? So it's super like even more exclusive than Philip Dufour watches, right? That's why they're mm. more expensive than Dufour watches. So the last one I remember seeing was on a collected man for like eight hundred and fifty thousand US. So big money, like we're talking huge money, but the. The supply is so limited. There's so few out there um, that you're able to buy or that ever come to market that you, you're going to pay through the nose for it. We have a Oof. troll in the back room. Who do we got? Who do we got? Oh, here he is. We got the one and only Swiss. Hello, Swiss. Hey, ma'am. Hey, hey ma'am. How's it going, man? I'm looking forward to this, <laughs> Urban. I want to see what they do. Urban Jerkinson. <laughs> what are they going to do this year? With Kari at the helm, I'm looking forward to this. This will be very good. Uh, who else? Romain Gauthier has some nice stuff. Ooh, this, look at the pricing. This, this is super nice. I love this. Wait, you that know is, who's, who's watching oh, this? That's nothing. Come on. This is Captain super. Can't buy that. Look at the. Are you kidding? This is super expensive. The finishing on this is super Give nice. Me a bag of shell, man. He's a counselor. <laughs> This is $86,000. This is not. <laughs> so what? Does it pay dividends? Oh. Oh. Does it pay dividends? Oh. Right. 
Oh, let me ask you, what do you think about... 52,500 for the panda. What do you think about this Resence? I think this is awful. I hate <laughs> Ali these. likes that. He has so, one. Who Ali? Likes this? No, Ali. Resence. He doesn't have Resence. He doesn't have yeah. Resence. You sure? Yeah, 100%. He has a reservoir. It's a different brand. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't like these at all, to be honest. I appreciate the watchmaking yeah, and that the hands already. never touch yeah. each other and what have you, but nah, right I'll, I'll pass on this. The one affordable piece you're passing on. Which one? I don't like the resins either. The resins there that was in the twenty thousand range. It's not ah, affordable. It. It's not. It's not cheap. Twenty thousand. All relative Swiss. They use ETA biz movement. That's uh. Forget about it. Look yeah. at this. Oh my goodness. Oh, this oh, is it's all request price though. It's all request price. Fuck, you know that's going to be expensive. It's going to cost you like an arm. 66500 for a 15500 <laughs> for a $26,000 watch. You see, wow. look, look at Big Sal. Big Sal is speaking my language. He says, Voodoo Lion cases are overlooked because of how gorgeous his dial are. The case with those style of lugs are so... See, I'm with you 100%. It's about the complete package. You know, you have to look at it. <laughs> what he offers, right? The package that he offers. <laughs> oh, my word. Oh, God. But yeah, I, I'm with you 100%. You know, actually, funny enough, he actually stole this design, though. He technically stole this design from Urban Jurgensen. <laughs> he did. The per first person who ever did this was another independent watchmaker who's very overlooked. His name is Derek Pratt. So he was an English watchmaker, and he doesn't get much press because uh, he was coming up right around the same time as George Daniels. And obviously, you know, George is probably the most important watchmaker of the last 300 years. So he didn't get as much uh, as much notoriety. But yeah, this style with these kind of what's called observatory hands and the what's it called? The teardrop style lugs, if you will. Uh, those were actually Derek, all Derek Pratt's designs, and Kari kind of took those because he spent time at uh, at uh, Urban Jurgensen apprenticing under under Derek Pratt. That would be a question if I if I could ask him like a question, like how has Derek Pratt influenced you know your your watchmaking career? That would be one I need to know. I need to ask him, you know, what kind of influence he had. But yeah, these are all. I mean, we're still talking about like eighty plus thousand dollar watches huge money <laughs> i love that one that was great Marco. That was good. uh we got wings and watches saying urban jerkinson lol they will be pulling out something big i think so i think so jeff so johnson you were talking about Marco. if they remake it you want to buy one right not that model but yes i do oh, love the engineer oh, okay okay i do love actually that would be a good watch for the captain to be honest with you especially for the price and oh yeah, yeah. It's a nice. That's a that's a gentle watch. It'd be a perfect complement to your your Royal Oak. To be honest with you, you I don't, don't like this. I like it. Uh I like it as much. You know what? I can't get behind it. The Chapek, I feel the same way. The the round, the um, way. you know, the round bezel in the case. Yeah. Very simple. Already, we got a question from Jeff Johnson. Thank you so much for. It's a nice. It's a very nice watch, but uh, if. I mean, I, you know, it what depends what you're going for, you know, in your collection. Yeah. It's a black dial. You don't need another sports watch. You want it for this watch, yeah. Jeff Johnson, it's because it's not that expensive. Uh, How much uh, was uh, it? You were offered to it for like 3500 3500 That's a good price. I mean, I think that's a great price. If you want Jeff to pick says, up a watch, absolutely. Uh, oh, for, a, for an everyday watch, <laughs> I think Marco would agree it's a great compared to other ones in that price range, right? Well, Jeff just pulled out. He's asking about the IWC Pilot 43 or the JLC Polaris 41. Personally, I'd go with the Pilot 43. But to be honest, I would hang, hit up Uncle Stefano for that Ingenieur. It's 42 millimeters, titanium case. Ingenieur is a Genta, Genta watch. And it'll be 3,500 as opposed to like 6,000 for the Polar, for the big Pilot 43 oh, or yeah. 6 plus sure. thousand. Yes. So yeah, I mean Jeff, if you're asking me per here, I forget the model. It's um, hold on one second. I think it's the AMG in titanium. Yeah, it is. Oh, he see the Savant. My nephew knows it's the AMG version. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Holy cow, man! <laughs> you're right, Captain. You won't be able to leave the house today. The head is like getting super. Getting. You know? But <laughs> I love it. 
because he's humble. That's why I love about him. Stop humble. humble. Always be humble. Always be a humble. swat a watch snob for certain brands, but still humble. Oh, I'm a total. <laughs> yeah, but you see, at least I admit that I'm a snob. No, no, yeah, like, I can't do. help it. I just am. Look at this. You get really nice titanium case. Yep. I love this kind of dial. It's just simple, perfect. I think as a daily wear, this is great. This is a great watch. And 42 mil, super wearable. 3,500 bucks. I think you can't go wrong with this, honestly. Yeah. That's is the point. entire watch sunblasted? I think so, right? The entire yes, watch is. sunblasted? Okay. It is. But yeah, if you're asking me between those two watches, Jeff, Pilot 43 or the JLC Polaris, I'd say Pilot 43, 100%. Uh, Monkey C Production. Why is every new to the scene watchmaker charged 20k plus for their time only watches, i.e. Bradley Taylor? Okay, let's pull it up. Who, who's Bradley Taylor? We'll have to find out. <laughs> we will find... Oh, choice. You know what? Do you like the MBNF Mad? Oh, this is... Come on. He's charging 20,000 for this? What? What is this crap? Are you kidding? Monkey C production. I'm with you 100. percent Come oh, on, no. this is no, ridiculous. No. And you know what's the worst part? It looks it like uses, a. Man. It looks like a shelf man. movement. He's using a Vaucher movement. Looks like a Ming. Right, right, right. It looks like it looks like the Baltic that they were just. Yeah, come on. The Baltic. Yes, it's nicely finished though, but I yeah. wouldn't pay twenty thousand for that. Listen, isn't he in or is he in Oregon? Yeah, it's or? it's a it's a Baltic uh, homage. That's right. Yeah. Listen, I'm sorry to say, okay, I don't like this. Like, to be honest with you, there comes a point in time, right, when people are like, oh, independence, independence. Uh-uh. Don't forget, big brands are big for a reason. They make really nice watch. Like, we pulled up. Hold on. Let's pull it up. Let me pull it up. Let's pull. Was he up. the watchmaker that joined the panel once? I remember. No, way back that's Keith know. and Myrick. Keith and Myrick. I should really email Myrick. that guy. Right, right, I right. never e emailed him. See, here's the thing, right? This one right here, David SW. 19,875, okay? You yep. get a precious metal case. It's rose gold. You get, uh, what's it called? A beautiful guilloche dial. I mean, you get three different guilloche patterns. The way this reflects light is unbelievable. You get a day date and a moon face. And you get this incredible movement, three-quarter style Frederick Piguet base movement. Absolutely gorgeous. You get the guilloche on the rotor, all for under 20,000. That's Three times better than that watch I just pulled up. Way better. There's a reason that these watches are, or these are big names. And I was looking at this watch. Actually, it's the one that Jonathan told me about. I'm coming around to it. It's the 3137, I believe it is. Wow. Are you ready for this? Swiss, you're going to love this. Look and that this. price, Mark, Mark, the price of that regular, wasn't that 40000 or more or maybe even 60000 Retail, it's like 43000 45000 retail. You're getting right. more than 50% off. And this, the finishing of this, are you ready for this? Look at this movement, okay? It's, it's a little smaller, admittedly. This is 36 millimeters, but I, I like this a lot. Look at this. Oh, oh shit, this is a terrible picture. It's a teeny tiny watch. The Swiss. movement is all freehand engraved. For you know how yeah. hard this. Is? You know how difficult that it is? that is. Some actual skill Dude, right there. And this is under like twenty twenty five thousand. This is fucking insane. For twenty five grand, you, this is oh my goodness. This is un fucking believable. Okay, I've been looking at this watch all day yesterday and all day today. I'm losing sleep over it. Okay, this is. Fucking insane. Let me just say that again. It is insanity. A guilloche dial in a precious metal case, and the entire movement is freehand engraved. Look at this. This is unbelievable. It looks, so, it looks amazing. I love independence. It looks incredible. I love independence, but you have to remember, you have to remember that there are those big brands that are excellent as well and better value for money. Mm-hmm. Monkey C production. Marco's got that ambition, baby. Um, okay. I don't know what that means, but thank you. SLC watch collector says, it looks like the Baltic that's order Kanye. is $550. <laughs> if I may, I think that's the Kanye West line. Oh, okay. Gotcha. That ambition, baby. Look at right, his eyes. Yes, yes, because the independent watchmakers. Yes, yes. What's, what is it? How does it go? Something next week at Surprise. Uh, we got Todd in the chat. Hello, Todd. Thanks for joining us. We got Mr. GMT joining the panel. Hello, GMT. 
Hey, boys, what's going on? How's things? Ah, all is well, man. How are you? Awesome, man. Awesome. Just enjoying your show, man. Very informative. Love it. Keep it up. Great, man. Oh, we got JDG5167 in the chat saying, it looks like a Vaucher movement that is used in the Hermes, Parmigiani, and Richard Mille. Yep, it was 100%. It is. Yeah, it is 100%. It. Although I will say, it's better finished. Um, yeah, finish was good. God, what was the, what's it called? Had beautiful uh, interior angles. Yeah, the angling, the the beveling was super nice. God, what was the brand? I just forgot the brand already. Hold on one second. Bradley Taylor. Bradley Taylor, that's the one, yep. Or Garrick. No, Garrick is crap. That's Tim Masso crap. I'm sorry. I don't like that one. I know Tim Masso. Oh, I, was, I keep thinking of the guy in Oregon. I forgot that guy. That's Keaton Myrick. Keaton, Keaton Merrick. Merrick. Merrick, Merrick. Okay. Yeah, I don't like this at all. Yeah. It's a pretty um, watch. I like the. I, I actually like the design and the aesthetic. Yeah, it's too simple, too ugly. So simple, so but ugly. Oh, yeah, Marco, we're talking about that watch. With, that watch you know, that, if we, that we that keep design. your train of thought, it has two different Giyoshi patterns. And it has a nicely finished movement. It's true. It does have two gears. Yeah, you're not wrong. You know what? You are wrong. But the thing is, right? So I that's a wildly that. popular look. Just look at what happened with the Baltic. I hate, you know, I'm, okay. I'm comparing apples to oranges. So but here's the thing, right? You can get the roof. this Torsty Lane with three different guilloche patterns. Now you can get two different movements, right? So you can get the regular one, which is. This right here, which I think is beautiful, but this is an edit based movement. So, you know, look, I guess it's frowned upon. Or you can get the Vaucher caliber, which are really nice. You know, it's basically the same one that Bradley Taylor had mm -hmm. and finish just as nicely. Mm -hmm. yeah, and it's about 8,000 bucks cheaper. I, I like that a lot. This is beautiful. It's yeah, 8,000 bucks cheaper. That's the thing. <laughs> I think this is like 12,000 or 10,000 Swiss francs. So for me, this is much nicer and you get much more handwork. You get three different guilloche patterns. You get the same Vaucher movement. I think Torsty Lane is, is for the price as good as it gets, in my opinion. Is that salmon or gold, that color? Gold. It looks salmon. We got big salmon. So yeah, it's salmon. If, if, if you have salmon gold. that color, I wouldn't eat it. No, it's definitely <laughs> it's pink. It's like a salmon pink, it's bronze. Type is this Peru or Swiss? Um, <laughs> yeah, guys, is, are you fucking colorblind? No, oh, salmon. This actually, is, I'm not. That, how is I that pink? Not. How is it's, that pink? It's, it's copper. salmon. It's, it's copper. totally it's salmon. It's copper. Copper. Yeah, I am copper. colorblind. Do you have a fucking problem with that? <laughs> Damn. We got Big Sal saying, I, is Habring considered guys. independent? The SDR considered independent? I don't, what I don't like is the black against the gold. Like I, I. Oh, I think it looks really good. It's blue, actually. It's the blue. It's deal. dark blue. It's that deal. looks black in, from what I'm seeing, but I'm calling it. Are you colorblind? Sexy as hell, man. <laughs> Here, I could pull up a different one. This one is also really nice. I this think is, this is yeah, I like beautiful. This. I don't know. Yeah, this shade of blue. I mean, I know now we're getting into dial. Now he's being picky. Look how picky he's being. A little bit. Mr. Little bit. Sexy. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's not What's true. happening, bro? How we are got... you, pal? We got respectably late. Who's joining respectably late? Saying he finished work and is catching up. Thank you for joining us. We got CB with a five dollars super chat saying not every independent will make it to the stars. Acribia, no. however, will. Yeah, I think they will. I, I think Acribia they definitely. Will. Yeah, Acribia, there's no question. See, the one thing I'm hoping about Acribia though is, or sorry, with Reshep or Sheppy is this. Okay, I want to see something new because. You know, FP Jorn is a great watchmaker, but we've seen the Remotoir and other devices. We've seen the Resonance. The only one who's made something new in the last, like, two, three hundred years is Daniels, George Daniels, with the coaxial escapement. Nobody has done anything new. They're just repurposing old complication, old movements, old styles into wristwatches as opposed to pocket watches or clocks or these other things. Ari, are you okay? Oh, you're muted, Ari. You are muted. It looks like he has a headache. No, I'm okay. Yeah. You're right, brother. I'm a little bit. Like, looks like he uh, hang on, hang on. Have you got your pants on? 
Oh my goodness! He's I a fat gay man. man. Of course, he has his pants on. Yeah. I think he has the hat. Was talking about. Man, he, half, yeah. the half the time, he doesn't. Wear don't pants. stand up for us, please. Do not stand up. No, I am wearing pants. Sorry. <laughs> he, <laughs> has the he has the hat. He has the hat. saying, "Come and get it. You got to give it to us. Come and get it. There we go. Todd is going to educate us. Here we go. Taylor took a historic high beat flyback chronograph movement apart." redesigned the bridges and balance components to make them better and spent three months hand finishing each movement. Okay. So maybe I'm just looking at the worst watch he makes, but I don't know. Um, the watch that I just pulled up was terrible in my opinion, personally. One second. Let us see. Bradley Taylor chronograph. Oh, he's a Canadian watchmaker. I can't hate on this guy. Then. Look at that. I gotta you be can't blind. hate on your own kind. <laughs> Canadian watchmakers, you got to love them. Hold on. I'm trying to see. Where's the chronograph? I can't see the chronograph. Is he on Instagram? Let's see. Bradley Taylor. Oh, he is. Here we go. That's cool. Let's pull it up. Let's pull it up. Okay. Let's see. Where is the chronograph? I don't see it. This is a Voshe movement, isn't it? Yeah, Voshe 5401. Huh. I don't know. I don't see the chronograph. Yes. A jo I don't think it is, though. Jay and Shapiro is a little more. I think it's like 25000 Maybe lit. <clears throat> I think it's a bit expensive. I love Jay and Shapiro gorgeous pieces and he's very known for his guilloche patterns super super great guilloche he actually just made this right here which i loved so it's a tantalum case with this mm. blue guilloche dial i think this is outstanding it's gorgeous it's like his his uh chronometer blue his chronometer blue it's the jan shapiro chrono <laughs> chronometer blue this was actually pre-sold it sold out completely the entire series of this and what he's known for is uh, interesting. How many pieces? I don't know. That's very limited, like 50 maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, what he's known for is what's known as the infinity weave. Um, let's see if I can find a picture. Infinity picked aqua as a dial color. Okay, here we go. So you see how there's a basket weave pattern within a basket weave pattern? <sighs> yeah. Can you see that? So that's actually, he invented that pattern, um, which is... Yeah, he's the first to ever do it. No one's ever done it before, which is pretty cool. But it's not my favorite. It's a little too intricate. Um, I like something. I don't know. It's it's a little too much. It become. I I've never seen it in person though. To be fair, so I can't really judge. Hmm. Interesting, but I don't know. And we got whole mouth saying just jumped in Nayoya Hida. See, here's the problem. It's too much. <laughs> There's too many independents. It becomes like a problem. You know what I mean? I would still get that Brega. The bre None of those have been that Brega yet. I'm looking for it. Yeah, this is nice, to be fair. I like the design. All these independents and, and not a mention yet of Laurent Ferrier. Dude, it's, it's become expensive. I yeah, mentioned they, it before. Yeah, it's very expensive. Too easy. Oh, okay. It's become too expensive. I like this a lot, but you, I don't even think you get a display case back because this is just the movement. Just like this very bare bones. Eh. You know what I mean? Like, eh, for under 20,000, I'd still get the Brege. Another Timex expedition, you know. Brege. I would 100% get the Brege any day of the week. Yeah, guys, it, even in, with the mainstream brands, you can get some crazy good prices. Like, I got my Vacheron, which retails for 22,000. I got it for 13. Right. And it has, you know, extremely good finish. I just found this one deal. It's a super good deal, in my opinion. For 13000 US. Hold on, let me pull it up. It's did, by you, did you buy it? Did you buy it? Are you going to buy it? But for no. 15 you can have the VC. So here's the thing, right? This is by Chopard, L-U-C Chopard. Oh, that's which awesome, is, man. They're super high-end uh, watch. Yeah, so you get a full Chopard, yeah. rose gold case. Uh, sub seconds. This is a day That's display beautiful. at the bottom. Eight. It's actually nine day power reserve, hand wind movement. So hold on, I gotta pull it up. Show par. 
Sure. They have a Geneva seal movement. Yep, it's Geneva seal. And the way it works mm -hmm. is insane. So, oh, hold on one second. So this is actually the movement here, right? So Geneva seal, yes. And it achieves a nine day power reserve because it has two barrels that are stacked together and twice. So it's four barrels all together that are coaxially stacked together. And mm -hmm. they work all together to create basically a nine day power reserve. And what's crazy even more is the fact that it's, it has 90 power reserve. Now, the problem with that is most watches with that long of a power reserve are very inaccurate. Um, but this is actually chronometer certified, which is wow. insane. That's a huge flex, in my opinion, to have a chronometer certified nine day power reserve. And you get that all for 13,000. It's better than what any independent can offer you, in my opinion. The low, the low, low, low and it's price. Geneva seal. $12,999. Look at this. 13864. Where are you going to find a deal like this? Rose gold case, nine day power reserve, hand winding, Geneva seal. I think this is as good as it gets, to be honest with you. Who's selling so, Cap, it? It has Cap, a. You should buy it, man. You should buy it. It's Cap. an Australian guy. Someone in Australia. Probably um, selling. To be honest, you know, with respect to all the watches we've seen on the stream, this is far down on my list of ones that I would buy. <laughs> Todd is asking, does this show part come with a Tiffany blue dial? Yeah. Like, that's that's no, but you can put it on a red band. I yes, mean, it's, you they're all beautiful. I mean, the movements, the finishing, they're all excellent. As Marco all right, Cap, don't worry about buying it. Forget it. Look at this. I mean, there's a lot of other ones that I definitely would buy. Um, if I, if I, you know, had, had money that, uh, you know, Burning a JDG hole asking, panel, where would you wear a dressy breguet or similar these days? So I was saying this, right? People are like, oh, you like these old band watches? I'm like, I think the ultimate flex, okay, the ultimate flex is wearing a hoodie with a dress watch. You don't think so? You wear a hoodie yeah. with uh, a dress I, watch. I wear, I wear my... metal, complicated dress watch. I wear my JLC, my platinum JLC. I, I wear my gold VC every day, every day. There you go. I don't yeah. care whatever I, I'm wearing. Look at that. See, he's a got a paddock and he's wearing like a... Exactly. You know what I mean? That's more you gotta, like, see, people got it totally wrong. Out. People think that, oh, because it's a dress watch, it's unwearable. No, you can 100% yeah. wear these pieces. Down I, think down. Wear, yeah. I think you can wear some of them, though. I mean, no, I disagree completely. People style. act as if like Breguet and Paddock and all these other watches are totally unreliable. You could wear these on a daily basis, no problem. That's what they're meant for. They're, they're you, watches yeah, for crazy. Yeah. I think it's over dial. Like. So, Monkey C Production, he's bringing up the Hematic, which we brought up earlier. Yeah, it's a tremendous watch. Tremendous. Oh, look at this. You see, Todd says, Marco, that sounds like me. I wore a hoodie with my Daniels when I did the whole thing. He's talking watches session. There you go. There we go. <laughs> we pull up the Daniels? Uh, it, we could pull it up. Sure. JDG says, I just have no idea where to wear a pest metal. Nah, forget the, forget all that stuff. You, you know what, Marco? Yeah. I think right. the real ultimate flex is to be homeless, but with a George Daniels on your wrist. Yes, there we go. <laughs> That's the ultimate flex. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, I'm not even going to go there. That's so yeah, wrong in so many ways. <laughs> no, I think he's, he's obviously joking. But okay, yeah, so this is, this is the millennium. I think that Todd has actually has a couple Daniels. So he has this right here. He has the Millennium, as far as I know. This was the one he was wearing uh, that he's referring to. But he also has this one, which is um, the Anniversary, if I'm not mistaken, is what it's called. Now, what's interesting about this is this watch, it, although it's branded by George Daniels, it was actually made by Roger Smith. So it was made by his his kind of, if you will, the person who he mentored, but it's branded it's Daniels. that one. You get yeah, you get the best of both worlds, right? A Daniel's branded watch, but made by his kind of the person who uh, who he brought up. I just want to read this by Big Sal saying Brege still suffers from Nicholas Hayek's passing. That was his special product. Wanted to bring back Brege to revive the brand to its glorious days, but his kids did not pursue it. Big Sal, I a hundred percent agree. I couldn't agree more. I think the current state of Brege is just awful, so poorly managed, and it, it, it has potential to be so much more. So much more. 
But yeah, guys, we did uh, we did just hit an hour and 45 minutes now. I think I wrap this show up. It's been a great show, very informative. Uh, certainly been, you know, outstanding. Like, you guys are crazy. Big Sal. Yeah, CB, really generous. Uh, Bubba Hotep, thank you very much. Obviously, we had the wizard earlier, Andres as well, who chimed in with a super chat of his own. You guys are really showing me the love tonight. SLC Watch Collector as well. Really appreciate you guys. Thank you very, very much. Um, oh, hold on. I just want to get this straight. Oh, Jesus. We got a ton of ton more chats coming in. Briswater, yeah. I wear my VC56 and overseas on weekdays awesome. and Rolex on weekends. Yep, there you go. Thomas Anderson, I wear Paddock and Longa with sweatshirts and sweaters. If I didn't, oh, I'd yeah. never wear them at all. Yeah, Paddock. Yep. Both, there both. you go. Great. And we got uh, saying – Roger made both the Millennium and the Anniversary. George made each of the prototypes. Interesting. See, I did not know that. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Shout out to Spring Drive by Grand Seiko's. Haters bring it on. It took 50 <laughs> years to perfect. Listen, the Grand Seiko Spring Drive is an abomination. It is the Frankenstein of watches, okay? It's got a quartz regulator with the mechanical movement. Oh, I don't like on. it at all. Come it's terrible. On. I'm sorry. No. I can't get on board with it. And on that note, hey, man, you. stop being a watch snob, man. He's <laughs> <laughs> the Frankenstein of the watch world. On that note, I want to thank. I'm just kidding, by the way. It's it's great. The Grand Seiko Spring Drive is excellent. Oh, you mean it. You mean it. Uh, just a little bit. I want to thank <laughs> REG for joining me. You're Can so I full of it. I'm serious. <laughs> I want to thank Ari. Thank you very much. Uncle Stevano, thanks so much for joining the chat. We got Mr. GMT. Swiss and the one and only yeah, the boys. And guys, you gotta remember yes. the most important thing is to wear your watches. That's what it's all about. And stay sexy. Take care, everybody.